In this section, we'll be making two charts that update their data at the same time. In this video, we'll focus on preparing data that gets updated when buttons are clicked. In preparation for this section, I've collected new data. This data comes from the United States Census and is data focused on poverty. This counts totals of poverty across all the states in the United States. I've slimmed down the data set and left only statistics about totals, about races, about genders, and about states. I've slimmed the data down even more to work with only the top five states with the highest numbers of people below the poverty line. In this video, we will build buttons that represent each state, and upon selecting each button, the data that will be sent to a bar chart and a pie chart will be updated, reflecting the data of that state. So let's get to it. We'll start by looking at our index.html file. Here, we have a button wrapper div. This will hold all of our buttons. We will include a load data JavaScript file, our index file, and a library.js file. We will also include a style sheet. Here's a look at the census data that has been transformed to a JSON file. This is an array of objects, and each object represents a state. Each object has the name of the state in certain parameters. Here's the total, here's the men, here's the women, and here are the races classified by the census. In our index.js file, the first thing we'll do is prepare the data by selecting the data from a JSON's data source, and then we will handle the data. We will work to get just the state names for the buttons. We will then return the state data for the buttons and also the complete data for the chart later on. Then, after we return the state data, and the full data result. We will build the buttons, we will add a button event on click, and we will get and show the currently selected state data and show it in the console for this section. Here, in our prepare data function, we will return a promise. We use D3's JSON method to extract the data from the file. Then we take the data, we map through the data, and we select the first element in the data. This will get passed to the buttons as the first selected button. We call this with selection and we resolve our promise with this selection. Once we get the data and select the first element for the buttons, we will get just the state names for the buttons in our index.js file. We will map through our results and return an object with the state name and the checked status. We will return this in a variable called just states. We will return an object with the states and the original data as a result. Then we will perform a function on the state data and the results and we will make a function to build the buttons using just the state data into our button wrapper div. Let's briefly review a build buttons function. In our library.js file, we will create a function that builds the buttons. We will take our parent ID, select it with D3 selector, stored in a parent variable. We will take this selection and create a data join out of it by selecting all group elements, associating the source data with D3's data method, and then we will take the data join and create an enter function for handling when the buttons get appended to the screen. We will build our enter function that performs a function on the enter selection. Our enter selection will append group elements to our enter selection and attribute a class to these group elements called button G. We will wrap our buttons in a group wrapper. We will then take all of our groups and append an input element to our group wrappers. We will associate some attributes with our input. It will be a radio input. It will have a value of the state name. It will have a class called state radio, and it will have a checked status. The checked status will perform a function on the data, and if checked is true, checked will be true. If checked is not true, there will not be a checked status. The name of our input will be selected state. We will also append a text label to our group elements. The text label will be the name of the state. We will also create some styles in our index.css file, and we will add some styles to the hover event, so that when we hover over it, the background turns dark gray, the font turns white, and the cursor turns to a pointer. Now, our visualization has buttons that have some minor hover effects on them. Let's add some button selection and data updating to our visualization. In our index.js file, after we build the buttons, we will add button events. We will use D3 to select all the radio buttons, and on the click event, we will add an event handler called update selected state. Let's make this update selected state function in our library.js file. In our index.js file, first, we must move this variable to a source at a global level. Now when we update just states after our prepared data function, we are updating the just states variable at a global reference. Now we can access this just states value in our library.js file. In our update selected state function, we can redeclare this just states variable by mapping through the just states existing data, turning every single state to a false checked state, and then we can look at the event, and if the event state that we pass this function equals the state that we are mapping through in our just states array, 
we can set the checked to true and then we can return the state to our just states variable. Now we can update our buttons with this just states data by calling again the build buttons function on our button wrapper. Here we will add an update selection to our data join in our build buttons function. So let's do that. In our build buttons function on our data join, we will add an update radio function. Let's build this update radio function. After our enter function, we will call a function on our update selection. We will have no transition duration and we will update the checked status of our radio based on the new data. And we will set the checked status to true if it is checked or null if it is not. Back in our index.js file, let's grab the source data and store it in a global variable. Here we take the resulting data and store it in a root data variable. We'll add this root data variable to a global scope. Now we can use our root data and look at the updated data that is reflected when we click on a button. In our library.js file, inside our update selected state function that runs when we click a button. After we update which state is selected, and after we update the buttons, let's log the newly updated selected data. We'll take the root data that's at the global scope and filter this data to show only the selected state using some filters and matching. And we will log the newly selected state data. Now in our visualization, when we select a state, that state shows up in our console with all of its state poverty data. Let's try selecting another state, Texas, and the Texas data shows up as well. Now we have a hold of the state and its data that we will be passing to the charts.